there's some powerful trends that are that are, are prevalent today, and, and it, Google has positioned itself in order to take advantage of some of these trends. Do you mind sharing a little bit of the yeah. big trends as you see them? Yeah, so people do sort of often ask, you know, what's the, uh, what's the future according to Google? And uh, I wouldn't presume uh, to predict that at all. But I, I think one of the things that, that I've learned from, from our, our founders and um, believe to be true in the field of technology is there are big sort of structural trends that you can see happening and that you can back. Um, and I think uh, there are three that I wanted to, to talk about today that I think really are coloring what we're spending our time on. And, and I'd like, if I can ask, if you're not too shy, a little bit of your assistance in uh, highlighting these trends. So firstly, let me just ask all of you, how many people have got a uh, connected device on you? Just say yes, raise your hand. So two things, yes, and raise your hand here. Yeah, I think the audio as well. Thank you. There you go. So everyone's got a connected device. Anybody got two connected devices on them right now? Yeah, about half the audience. Anybody got three connected devices on them right now? A couple of people here. You guys in very techy roles, or you just got, had implants? <laughs> but if you pause for a second, so that's interesting. So we, we're, we've got use. We've probably got a couple of connected devices per person, maybe slightly less here. We're the lucky minority still. So the majority of people on the planet have no internet access. They are not connected. They have no connected devices. It's getting on for 3 billion of us who are connected now. Uh, but over the next three to five years, it becomes the majority. We're at a, at a point of inflection where we're going to have 5 billion people connected 2020, 2021, and the vast majority of the people on the planet over the next few years. So although we've got used to this and we're connected, uh, there's an explosion of connectivity that's going to happen. And as I said earlier, I think you know, it demonstrably changes lives to the better when you get access to market information, educational information, ideas, uh, and all of the, you know, all of the uh, connections you can make on the internet. So the first big trend for, for us is, is connectivity. And so what we're doing in connectivity is firstly trying to make devices uh, less and less expensive for the poorest people so that it's easy to get online for as many people as possible. Uh, and, and then secondly, try to make apps faster and try to stimulate competition amongst telcos uh, to make the cost of data lower, trying to make our apps consume less data and all those things. So I think the first big trend is about the sort of explosion of connectivity, and we're just at the beginning, although you all enjoy one or two devices. So the second, uh, the second trend, let me ask another question. How many people uh, have used machine learning uh, today? One person, two people, three or four people? We used it, used it in your day job. What have you used? Can you anybody like to share, or is it proprietary technology? Anybody like to share what they've used? No. <laughs> this is a very uncomfortable uh, at sharing confidential information, audience. So, uh, has anybody used Google Search today, or Maps, or watched a video on YouTube, or any of those other services? If so, you've all used machine learning because machine learning is is just. Uh, again, it's at an inflection point. It's a different way of computing. If you talk to Sergey Brin, one of our founders, he said when he started Google, uh, and he was still a student at Stanford, um, they thought it was a dead end in computer science, and maybe there are com some computer scientists in the room, so I won't go too far into the technical uh, side of things, but they thought it was a dead end. They thought sort of AI and machine learning w was something that was just not going to be technically possible. And what we've seen is um, a... a, a real explosion of potential driven by machines that can look at large data sets and actually learn patterns and recognize things and start to predict what's going on. So um, we use that a lot in um, Google. Uh, it's really good at identifying voice. So Google Translate, which is powered by voice and translation, the, uh, the accuracy in multiple languages has spiked up massively in the last two years. Uh, if you talk to Google, the voice recognition or Google Home or, or, or our search app is getting better all the time. Most of you will probably have Apple devices because that's the kind of brand conscious uh, early adopter uh, high end audience that you are. Uh, <laughs> and you'll have Siri, that's quite good. Uh, and you know, so is the Amazon stuff. So all of this stuff is advancing a lot. So machine learning is fueling better understanding of language, but it's also fueling things like Google Photos, which allows you to search your photographs for things you haven't categorized them as. So, sunsets or dogs or smiles or parties or birthdays or places and so on. So getting better in those areas, and we can talk a bit about that perhaps later. So there's a change in what's possible uh, through machine learning. And what I think that means is the second trend is better tools for everyone. 
So let me explain what I mean by that. So if I speak, if I speak to my phone and do a search with voice, what happens is a voice file gets recorded. It goes to a server. It's distributed to a thousand other servers. They all try to figure out what's this British guy saying uh, and come back with an answer, which we then run a search on, come back with that answer, send it to the phone, and a voice will speak back the answer. And that happens in a very short time. But with machine learning, we've been able to identify um, more accurately from fewer data points in the voice file what's being said, which means that we can run a higher quality service on a cheaper device with less data cost. So that's a step towards making this stuff more accessible to everybody. So I think that's a big change that's happening. We can talk more about that. So machine learning and smarter tools for everyone will be my second trend. And my third and last uh, is about how we learn. So I'm going to ask you another question. And this time, you're going to have to divulge some personal information, respectfully, Senator. <laughs> um, how many people have ever watched uh, and learned something from watching a YouTube video? Learn how to do something? Anybody? Yes? Now, who would care to chat? Tell me what you've learned, anybody. Gus, fantastic. Uh, cooking recipe for a barbecue. Cooking for a barbecue. Basic but good man cooking. Excellent. What else? <laughs> Has anybody else learned something at the back? Yeah, man. Uh, learning over the rainbow on ukulele. <laughs> learning to, very specific, but uh, music is very popular as well. Yeah. What else have we learned, sir? Uh, Excel spreadsheets. Well, <laughs> no, but it's true. Learn how to do Excel. So complicated functionality, coding, something technical for work or, or business. Absolutely. What else? Yeah. How to tie a bow tie. How to tie a bow tie. I've never asked this question and not had somebody say how to tie a bow tie. <laughs> so you're not alone. Very popular stuff. Anything else? Languages. Languages. Yeah. Any particular languages? English. English. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, yeah, so uh, really popular for language and learning all kinds of things. Anything else that's different from anybody? I'll admit I did actually go and try to learn how to tie a bow tie, and yeah. I failed miserably. So <laughs> There's a remedial video for something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we could go on and on, but I think uh, if you pause for a second and think, those of you who've learned something, who made the video that you learned from? Probably wasn't the bow tie manufacturing company. It probably wasn't uh, Microsoft. It probably wasn't a professional chef. What? most cases what you're learning from is somebody like you, somebody who happens to be good at playing the ukulele, somebody who happens to be passionate about um, you know, writing um, code in Excel or whatever. So what we see there is that people are learning new things, and they're learning them on a sort of just-in-time basis when they need them, and they're learning them from people that they're never going to meet who are like them. And I think it's a real shift and revolution. So when you think about why do I think it's so important that people have access, it's because this is a huge opportunity to learn new things in new ways just in time. And so one of the things that didn't come up there is fixing something that's broken. So broken washing machine, how on earth do I fix it? You know, you don't need to, at that point to go and look at the instruction manual, right? You want a short video that says, you know, basically pull this plug out and, you know, stick that in there and it stops your kitchen flooding. So, I mean, I think that's the third key trend. So we've got like an explosion of connection where we go from a minority of people to a majority of people online. We've got technology that's accelerating in a way that tools become smarter and thinner and simpler. And then thirdly, you've got this um, opportunity when more people are connected for ideas to connect with each other and for people to learn new things. So that really colors a lot of what drives sure. Google. So I'm sorry it's a very long answer, no. uh, Clint, but that is um, certainly colors everything that we're spending time on. Got it.